What, I still haven't managed to kill myself yet? It's like Megadeth up in here. My bad, I thought something interesting was gonna happen here. Evidently not. Okay, for real, let's go upstairs using these handy dandy freckles on the floor. Ugh, come floor. On, no, come on. Hey. Uh, uh, <gasps> my dream has come true! What a cut rate manner. Won't welcome it on my bedside, bedside. Alright, you. There will be no freaking the hell out. Exactly. Right, so now that we're on this floor, let's be. Just be. Because. Because what is the line between deflating pomposity? and insulting sincerity. What is the line between making fun of someone and just bullying them? And what is going on in Syria? Wow, that got serious. Get it off! Anyway, never you mind any of that nonsense. Probably gonna cut all of it out, unless I don't. Uh, <coughs> Here's a stool. It's a heavy stool. It's not curiously heavy, it's just heavy. I don't know what we're gonna do with it, so never mind that. Uh, the Adorna Chronicles, the adventures of Adrian Adorna, the city's greatest explorer, book one. We left the city aboard the ship. Say, Titan! We were to be dropped off at the most westward tip of the continent. Our intentions to map the unexplored lands to the west and find a land route back to the city. We had packed aboard the Sea Titan! The equipment necessary. <sighs> For a variety of terrains and situations. Little did we know the adventures we were to face. The time slipped by quietly until one fateful night when the call rang out. Pirates! The bell was sounded, and the sailors swarmed over the sails in a vain effort for more speed to outrun them. Our mighty ship's cannon was brought to bear, and the cannon let loose a mighty blast that tore a great hole in their main deck. But it wasn't enough to stop them. The pirate ship's response to our cannon fire was to catapult over bottles filled with fuel, followed by several fire arrows. Our sails became a fiery inferno. The pirates caught up in a matter of moments and jumped to our decks, brandishing cutlasses and sabers. They ruthlessly threw the first mate overboard and threatened more harm if we did not immediately surrender. I immediately grabbed the closest pirate, wrestled his sword from him, and threw him into the blazing sails. His screams were muted by the deafening roar of the rest of the pirates boarding the ship. I ran another pirate through with the sword and then grabbed his saber and attacked the next pirate. Oh, how exciting. Let's read some more. Uh, uh, book two. As we moved inland, we discovered many strange and unusual creatures and plants. There were plants that appeared to be similar to roses, only blue. The followers... The flowers had a wonderful fragrance, and we gathered some of their seeds in the hopes of growing them once we returned home. There was another unusual plant. This one was horrible. Resembling a giant eyeball, it was something to give a person nightmares. The most dangerous plant we found was a large plant with an extremely large flower, almost large enough to stand in. The flower was purplish and shaped like a pitcher, and its perfume was capable of knocking a man out for half hour or more. As we were walking through the jungle, I noticed a large pile of rocks off to the north. I decided to see what was there, and soon discovered a chasm that led deep into the bowels of the earth. We quickly got some gear together and bravely entered the unknown darkness. Venturing cautiously down the steep embankment, we encountered a wondrous cavern. There were various glowing mushrooms all around, and a narrow stream running through it. Massive stalactites and stalagmites grew from the floor and ceiling, and the walls glistened with moisture. The most wondrous thing of all in the cave was the tiny pinpoints of light scintillating all around us. Investigating closer, we realized that these lights were simply the glow of the mushrooms reflecting through the crystals that dotted the ceiling and walls. The most wondrous thing of the all in the cave. Fix that too, please. Thank you. That'll be $50, 100 
While mapping the area south of where we camped, I discovered that the source of the noise that had disturbed our peaceful slumbers was a river. It appeared to flow freely, without any rapids, sandbars, or potential hazards. Best of all, it was flowing westward towards the city. Was this the source of the freshwater river that flowed so serenely through town? Wasting no time, we lashed together stout tree trunks to form several rafts. I ordered these rafts to be bound together in a loose chain to prevent us from being separated. We then boarded the rafts and set out. After traveling by raft for almost a week, we thought to make camp on land. We found a sheltered area to make camp and soon settled in for the night. The rafts were tied to some large trees that were close to the water's edge. These trees were not particularly large. In fact, they resembled large men covered in bark. <laughs> the growing darkness made the resemblance stronger, and I must confess that it spooked me such that I imagined it sounded like the tree growled when the raft was tied to it. Our camp was located about a half mile from the rafts, so we left one of the servants to guard them. There was a large commotion during the night, and several bears came through the camp and tore up our tents. No one got a good look at the bears, except the person on watch. He tried claiming that it was not a group of bears, but several mobile trees. <laughs> He had obviously fallen asleep on watch and was severely chastised. Unfortunately, the bears also attacked our rafts, tearing up the trees they were attached to. We only had two of the original five rafts left, and our extra servant was gone. The river journey progressed well, with no further loss of servants or rafts. We stopped for a few hours each day to map the area around the river bank, and then continued down river. It was as I had surmised. This river was indeed the source of the freshwater stream. It was with much rejoicing and fanfare that we entered the city, having explored and mapped areas previously unknown and bringing the wonders of the adventure with us. Well, I'm sure there's nothing else in this library. Let's am stray, boys. Never you mind that guy, you just walk oh, well, on past. I guess it was Oh, 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 oh. So. What's that? What you want to do is. Haha. <laughs> never mind. You're never going to make it through here. So, unfortunately, you can't turn off these lights that I'm aware of. Rather unfortunate. I thought these guys had another conversation here, but I guess I was mistaken and will remain mistaken. Ever and more, ever and more, ever and more. Etc. So never anybody mind. One of them has a key, maybe both of them. I think it's just a front door key. I'm not gonna be needing that. Alright, now. Here's a thing all but pish and tish, you see? Uh-oh. <sighs> Thief, I know thee too well. Uh, no, wait, never mind. Here is not a thing but pish and tush. Well, here's part of the thing but pish and tush, okay? Pish. Tush. Got it. That's the office, as we can see on the map here. It's the second floor. But we can't get in. Why can't we get in? Why? It's because God hates us. Unfortunately, the opinion of God is of no consequence in this world, as we are dealing with the Builder, not God, so... Stum your blum. Get it? Good. This floor might contain the thing, oh, but pish and tush. Also, there should be some dude walking around, and not this dude, but, you know, a different, more important-looking dude. But, uh, I don't see him. Alright. Maybe he walks everywhere or something? I really don't know. But there's just one key for all the bedrooms. It's security! So, if you're looking to get robbed... And then eat a pancake. It's Lord Highwater's room. Now, yes, okay, so. Got this lovely bathroom, which actually has a key. There's never anything in a bathroom, lovely or not. Small metal key. Very, very descriptive. I don't even freaking believe it. And no readables. What a shame. You've acquired a content match. All right. Now, okay, here's the thing, oh, but pish and tush. Basically, 
hidden tiny switch required for uh, progression. Why? Because here's the office key. Not a fan of that. I mean, this is optional, so I guess it's fair enough if it was just that. But yeah, it took me forever to find that. And I don't think there's any clues even. So, yeah. Complain. Done. Now let's go and do something other than that. Ooh, hang on. Yeah, it's kind of neat because you... The main light turns off, but the night light turns on, and so... I guess it's nothing now. You have to, like, Not weigh again. the checks and balances. If you love... Home Malone, you'll love blank check. It's a movie where a kid gets a blank check. He writes in a million dollars and manages to cash it for hilarious reasons. And then he spends all of it and realizes that having money is more trouble than it's worth. And goes back to being poor and happy, which people keep claiming. Oh, you don't really want money. It's not going to make you happy. Oh, I see. That must be why I'm miserable. It's much like Yes Man, where fun stuff happens and then the movie has to end and have some sort of twist in it, so they end up making a bunch of really lame stuff happen that ruins all the fun. <laughs> Anyways, I, I heard something which may be that guy I'm looking for. I don't know. Guessful thinking. Wishful guessing. Oh, oh, oh. Is it you? Is it you? It's not you. Wait a minute. If it ain't you, then who the hell is it? It's not you, is it? No, it isn't you. Do I have the key I'm looking? I do have the captain's key. I've Damn, I, I got it already. So maybe I did loot that guy. Well, <laughs> let's just pretend that never happened. Oh, dear. Ah, another content match. I'm winning the game. Every second of the day. Well, it's my second version of the game. It's get anything other than a green monetization symbol on the video. Let's lower our standards. That always works to turn companies around. I'm so glad we hired Evie and James onto the staff last fall. Evie is great with Philip and little George, and their little girl Gloria is nearly Anne's age, so it's a blessing she has a playmate here in the house. My dear younger daughter is so precocious, she would surely drive us all mad otherwise. As for Mary, she's growing into a lovely young lady. It's hard to believe she will be sixteen in April. My goodness, how time flies. Robert, on the other hand, is already grown, and I'm certain he's in love with someone. I remember falling for Alan when I was 18, and I know what that faraway look in his eyes means. I hope he introduces us soon. Alan has been preoccupied with something lately. After a lovely holiday season, in which he was fully engaged with me and the children, he seems to be worrying about something these days. I dare not ask him what's troubling him. No doubt it's some business venture or other. I'm really looking forward to our short winter vacation coming up next week. We barely left home during the holidays, and they were a busy time, so getting away with the children and Maddie and Mortimer to help will no doubt be a welcome respite for all of us. I thought to bring Evie along, but I could tell she wanted to stay home with Gloria, and I can't blame her for that. Maddie is childless and won't mind being nanny for a few days. We're leaving tomorrow, and the break can't come soon enough. Alan has been really troubled of late, and I overheard him talking to Ellensworth yesterday about something involving emeralds and someone named Miller. I would love to hope it's a new piece of jewelry for me or the girls, but I could tell from the tone of their conversation that it was business. I went to ask Robert something late the other night, and he wasn't in his room. I asked Mortimer where he was, and he mumbled something about not knowing, but I could tell he was hiding something. I'm starting to suspect Mort knows something about my son's romantic endeavors, which would make sense. He's the kind of faithful servant a young man would trust with his secrets. That's fine. An unnecessary tale that has no importance to anything. Mo, 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 mo. You've already got a necklace, Mo. What do you want to drink a flaming Homer for? Okay, so I do have the Capitaine's key, but first. <laughs> Ooh. Beep, 
I am gonna leave you alone, actually. I've got something important to do downstairs. <laughs> Out here! Good God, you guys! Stop hey. being a gr no, goddamn a pest, you picnics! I'm a chef. Pack! Anyways, yes, now that I got the captain's key from some place I don't even remember, bumbling and stumbling about. Now let's see what skeletons abide in this closet of a room. <laughs> it's about as big as my room. Lol. Lol. <laughs> oh man. Hey, it's a book. Hey, you guys, it's an evil picture with an evil monkey, or you know, an angel of death. Bum 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 bum. Not just a regular angel of death, but an angel of death with a heavy metal riff pasted onto it. Blast this staff! They're nothing but incompetence! No one can even serve me a bloody bowl of hot soup! Festering Burrick down the lot of them! I have more important things to worry about, though. Lord H is trying to get his hands on a formula for making emeralds or something. Some inventor over in Dayport is offering it to the highest bidder. And, well, ain't nobody got more money than my boss. At least not in Aldale. I can't figure out what he wants with it, though. It ain't like he owns a factory where they could make the gems. Well, Lord H got it for 10,000. It's pocket change for him, but man, what I could do with that kind of money. My debts to Barnson could be paid off with half of it for one thing, and I'd sure like to buy me a night with Sheila every so often too. A man's got needs. Assuming he asks me to deliver it and get the formula from this inventor, I may have to work an angle to keep some for myself. A courier's fee. Yeah, that should work. Tonight, I take the 10,000 to Miller and Dayport to pay him for the formula and bring it back. Grayson is supposed to go with me, but when we get there, I'm going to tell him to stay and guard the carriage and let me handle it. I plan to offer Miller 7,000 and tell him that's all Lord H was willing to send. Take it or leave it. That should make me a nice three grand to cover some debts. I can slip it in my coat and Grayson will be none the wiser. Also, I gotta remember to clean up the blood stain in my practice interrogation room soon, before one of the staff finds it. I don't need to be having to explain that to Lord H. Well, damn. That didn't exactly work out as I planned. Miller, that stubborn old bastard, he refused to take less than the full amount. I kept telling him I only brought 7,000 and yelling at him to take it or else, but he just wouldn't shut up or give in. Told me to get the hell out, and I lost it. Beat him senseless, and the next thing I knew, he was dead. I must have stabbed him. I don't remember. So I took the formula, pocketed the whole 10,000, and left the front door ajar and made a mess to make it look like a robbery gone bad. That should take care of that. Grayson had no idea. I got the formula for boss, made it look like a random crime, and I'm a much wealthier man tonight. I just wish I could shake the weird feeling I got as I was leaving. It's like there was someone else in there, down in the basement. Obviously, it was my imagination getting the better of me. The family is leaving on winter holiday tomorrow, which means I get to play head games with the staff. I love this time of year. The Cretans want so badly to get into the wine and party, but half of them are too afraid to because they don't know how I'll react. Think I'll go over to South Quarter and find me a really pretty whore tomorrow night to celebrate. Maybe two whores. <laughs> well, I'm... This guy, you know, you just gotta be patient. You just gotta be patient. You want him to get his, well, he will get his, but... Just gotta be patient, man. Anything you could think of is not as nice, and I mean nice, as it will happen to him. La 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 la. I mean, you know, presumably. Hey. No spoilers. Also... <laughs> See what they figure of that, eh? Don't think there's anything else in it. Oh, no. Expert is expert. Oh, no. Oh, I thought it was an alarm switch. <laughs> no need to worry, then. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, oh boy. I need to find the formula. I get that. Well, that's optional, but I'll do it anyway. Find the sword. Find some dirty laundry. Yep, yeah, okay. I remember. Now all I have to do is do it. Push on the puller and pull on the pusher and the pickles go into the jar. Copyright! I just made you not have to watch Pontauntauntiful pontoon coke bottle styling Chuck. 
by saying that one line. Ah, uh, how tragic. Now, what do I want to do now? I guess I want to go up here. Do I want to go over here? I think I do. Seems like a good, tasty bone up here. No innuendo intended. That was a weak snort. You will not attract the ladies with a weak snort like that. Gotta go like this. <laughs> They'll be all up on. Okay. Is this the office? Looks different. So yeah, I, I searched all around for this. Don't remember any clues. So, not a huge fan of that. But, hey, oh well. That is the heavy metal mother. She is the heavy metal mother. I'm pretty sure that that's heavy metal. Also, freaking adorable and cute little family pictures there with the sort of family love that never really happens because kids are always just like yelling and rolling their eyes at their parents and never hugging them. Come on. But, you know, whatever. Also, here's another tiny switch. But this one, at least you're in the room and at least you're, you, you're pretty sure there's a switch. So your area of searchment is limited, but eh. The holidays were a wonderful time with many tender family moments. If only they could have lasted forever. But now the new year calls with some business. My friend Javone in Dayport has informed me that Mark Miller, the eccentric old inventor, has developed a formula for manufacturing flawless emeralds from raw materials and plans to auction the formula to the underground's highest bidder. I'm not certain why, but I feel like I need to get hold of it, if for no other reason than to keep Fairbanks, or someone like him, from getting it and doing something with it. I think I'll approach the Hammerites with an idea. Brother Thaddeus, a dear old friend in the Order, has referred me to Brother Claudius at the Cathedral here in Aldale to speak of my idea with regards to the formula. Namely, that if I obtain the formula and then arrange and fund the procurement of the necessary raw materials, that the hammers would do the actual manufacturing. In return for their facilities and labors, they would keep 40% of the emeralds for their coffers. A meeting with Claudius at nine bells in the morning. This is most unfortunate. Brother Claudius said in no uncertain terms that the Hammerites were neither interested nor equipped to engage in the manufacture of emeralds. I still need to outbid everyone and get my hands on it, but if I am ever to put it to use, I'll have to find some other way. Perhaps it's time to contact the Mechanists, which I understand are a splinter group which broke away from the Hammers recently. I hear that they and their leader, a Brother Karras, are more interested in technology than the Order of the Hammer. I have met with a mechanist named Vilnia, who has expressed great interest in my proposal. She has told me that the mechanists produce security gadgets for themselves and the nobility, which require emeralds, and access to a ready supply of flawless emeralds, even synthetic ones, would allow them to accelerate the production of these machines. She has assured me that Karras agrees with the arrangement, and expects me to come through with the formula and raw materials. They will be ready to begin production by the end of March. Regarding the formula, I have sent my bid by courier to Miller. I can't imagine at 10,000 that anyone will outbid me, so it's as good as mine. I received a correspondence from Miller this morning accepting my bid. He instructed me to send the payment with my most trusted man tomorrow evening. I can only entrust Ellensworth with this, but will send Grayson along to keep things in check. Joseph certainly has a temper, and Grayson is very level-headed. It won't hurt to play it safe. I'm relieved that I'll have the formula in hand and locked safely away before we leave for our little winter retreat. It'll be good to take my mind off of these matters for a few days and enjoy the family. Robert is a grown man and I need to connect with him. He has seemed a bit distant these last few months. Ellensworth handed me the formula upon his return a short while ago and said that everything went according to plan. Just what I wanted to hear. I've secured it and am making preparations to depart on vacation in the morning. What a relief! I do need to tend to one issue when I get back, however. Philip sometimes likes to wander off with one of the stools, and I need to let him know that those are special stools and need to be left in the library. I can't be traipsing all over the house looking for the third stool every time I need into my secret office. I'll just get him his own stool to keep in his room and have Mortimer painted blue for him. I should have known not to look at the newspaper this morning. Miller was murdered last night. I will not have time to question Ellensworth before we depart in the morning, so I must assume that he left Miller alive and well, and that some other opportunistic criminal broke in to rob Miller of the formula, found it already gone, and took out his frustration on the poor man. I fear that ruffian must have my money, but I dare not say anything to the authorities. The fewer people who know I have the formula, the better. 
I'm just going to put all this business out of my mind as best I can and enjoy my leave. I only hope I can shake the nagging suspicion in the back of my mind that Joseph somehow was involved. But surely Grayson would have told me if anything went awry with the transaction. So, for some reason this is like ultra-modern digital supreme land. And the combination is Lord Highwater. The annual service of your wall safe has been completed. The combination has been set to 4244 per your request. Please see the itemization below and remit payment at your earliest convenience. <laughs> 4244. Extremely secure. Not to be used as your password on your luggage. So. There's some loot. There's that. I need one more. Where the heck is it? I've forgotten. That ain't good. Anyways, there's the formula. Eh, let's just have a little look-see. Whoa! 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 Uh, never mind, I'm sure that those good old brain boxes at the Mechanist facility land will be able to do something with it. Okay, so I want that. I need the sword. I need some dirty laundry. Okay. Yeah, where's that? Where'd them other emeralds be? Oh, well, I'm sure that I'll remember at some point. But first... Let's go get ourselves a stool, etc. That's right. Oof. Say that oof to me, baby. Right. So, uh, Philip. So, just breaking into the kids' rooms. No worries. No worries. I ain't gonna kidnap you. I ain't gonna do nothing. Just looking for your stool. Ah, there it is. There. Okay. You just go back to sleep now. No worries. There's the stool. Thank you. Uh, and good night. <laughs> but seriously, let's uh, break into the other kids. Well, not really exactly breaking in. <laughs> when that happens. But you know, hey, I gotta rob everybody's room. The kids and the grown-ups and the aunts and the uncles and... Not the portraits, though. They're not valuable. Snot-nosed little family members. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. Bedroom's key. Very secure. No worries. And don't forget the crap flap. Dear Robert, I enjoyed meeting you at the masquerade ball. You danced divinely, and I had a wonderful time. I confess that I had been watching you dance with the other girls and hoped you would ask me to dance also. And you did. I enjoyed our conversation on the balcony afterward as well. This isn't my accent, by the way. I pray you won't think me too forward, but I would like to see you again. A family friend, an artist, has a studio in Dayport and offers us the use of it. Will you meet me there tomorrow night at ten bells? Please say yes. I enclose a note with directions to the studio. I look forward to our rendezvous with great anticipation. Julia. Dearest Robert, I'm on a flutter today and I can't keep my mind on my work. It insists upon drifting back to last night and those wonderful hours we spent together. I feel as though we shared our souls with each other. I have no idea we had talked so late into the evening. Evening? More like the wee hours of the morning. How I ever managed to sneak back into my house unnoticed, I'll never know. I cannot stop thinking about you. I long to see you. My parents leave town for a few days at the end of this week, and I've arranged the use of the studio again. Please say you'll meet me then. I eagerly await your reply. Julia. My darling, never did I dream that love could be so sweet. The world seems a new place today. The light cleaner, the colors brighter, the days so full of promise, and the hills alive with music. You have awakened in me a self I have never known, and what wondrous feelings and emotions she embodies. It was painful to reveal my last name to you, but I feel a weight has been lifted from me, and I am truly relieved that you feel as I do. Our father's rivalry has nothing to do with our true love. I realize it complicates matters immensely, but we must keep our love secret, at least for now. I cannot wait to see you again soon, my darling, soon, Julia. 
My love, I'm so glad we decided to confide in Brother Thaddeus. As the only mutual friend of both our families, I feel he alone is in the unique position to support us, and surely he will marry us come springtime. I will miss you terribly while you are away with your family. Think of me, and know that I will be thinking of you. Keep my picture close, that you may be reminded of... What awaits your return? Be safe, return to me with all speed, all of my love, and then some Julia. It's not an objective. Boo. <laughs> okay. Well, then, that's not an objective either. How incredibly unfortunate. Wait, what the heck? Oh. Hey, hey guys. Oh, my stars, I am in love. She was at the Bumblesons Masquerade Ball. So graceful, so mysterious. After several dances, I convinced her we should unmask, and she was a sight to behold. Delicate skin, fair hair, and lips the color of a rose in spring. I was mad about her, and it was clear she felt the same of me. Then I said we must make plans to meet again, and told her my name, and I thought I saw a look of panic in her eyes for a moment. No doubt she realized who my father is. But then she was again as lovely as ever, and she charmed me such that I nearly didn't get her name. But at last, as she took her leave, she revealed it. Julia. And she said she would be in touch. I cannot bear to wait for a communique. Nearly a week has passed, and I think of Julia night and day. I long for a message from her, but I'm beginning to fear that she was merely playing me for the fool, or is too intimidated by my name to send me a note. I must remain hopeful and vigilant. Oh, joyous day! I got a note from my Julia, relayed to me by dear old Mortimer from some acquaintance of his. I suppose she was too nervous to send it by post. She wants to meet tomorrow night at ten bells, in Dayport of all places, in an artist's studio. She says he's a family friend, and has offered to let us rendezvous there after hours. I am literally trembling with excitement as I write this. Tomorrow night cannot come soon enough. I have confided in old Mortimer, and he has agreed to arrange to let me slip out in the carriage for the rendezvous. I have also mentioned it to my oldest friend and confidant, Brother Thaddeus. He is most excited for me. Last night was truly a magical experience. I still feel as if I'm floating on clouds this morning. Julia was there in a lovely green dress, and as soon as she let me into the studio, we embraced and held one another for what seemed an eternity. We talked for hours, discussing all manner of things, and professed our love. I couldn't bear for the night to end, but eventually I said my good night and returned home in the carriage. We arranged to meet three nights hence in the same location. Last night's rendezvous with Julia was even more magical. We declared our love boldly, but upon opening a window and singing it to the officer patrolling outside, she quickly shushed me because that's ridiculous. <coughs> I asked, I asked her, why must we maintain secrecy? And then she told me her last name, Fairbanks, Julia Fairbanks. I am in love with the daughter of my father's bitterly hated rival. Our families have been feuding for three generations. I should have run away, but I could not. I love her, and to hell with the feud. It is my father's feud, but it is not mine. Julia feels the same way. She declares me her one true love and says, damn the consequences. But things are certainly much more complicated now. The last month has been a whirlwind of secret meetings with Julia, telling lies and calling on favors to keep our love a secret from both families. We could not bear it any longer, and met together with Brother Thaddeus, a friend to both families, and revealed our love to him. The dear man accepted it, as I knew he would, and agreed to marry us in the spring when the time is right. He convinced us our families were not ready to accept our love, and urged us to continue in secret for now and exercise patience. Julia gave me a picture of herself to get me through the long droughts between our meetings. I've tucked it inside the storybook on my desk so I can open it whenever I need without fear of it being discovered. The holidays have proven most difficult, as I want nothing more than to be with Julia. Yet the call of my family during these times is hard to ignore. 
My dear brothers and sisters are the world to me, and I have enjoyed this time with them, but I long to be with my love more. I have to see her again before we leave on winter holiday in two weeks. Brother Thaddeus has been more supportive of our love than I would have ever imagined. I can't fathom how awfully difficult this would be without him. Then. Spring seems ages away. Will this winter never end? We leave on winter holiday on the morrow, and the idea of being away for five long days is distressing me. I want nothing more than to take my storybook along to keep me company. But alas, with a picture to be discovered, it would spell disaster. I will have to rely on the image of my beautiful love in my mind's eye to get me through. I've also gotten the crypt key from father, so I can go visit grandfather's crypt when I'm so inclined. Oh, oh, oh boy. Looks like the high water son Robert and Fairbanks' daughter Julia are head over heels in love. Better not mention this to Fairbanks. The last thing you want to do now is to escalate this feud to a war while you're in the thick of it. Indeed. Still... The emeralds. Where are the last em I could look them up, but I can't believe that I forgot. Ridiculous. Oh, well, maybe they're in the crypt. I don't think so, but hey. Your toy jewelry is far more important than you are, so lock it up with a triple quadruple style, but don't bother locking your room. Blurb it a blurb. Also, be her when you grow up. She's she's a grown up. That's what you should strive to be, young Missy. Not some sort of fun loving fun haver. No, you gotta be a taxpayer. That's right. And it is to be hoped that one day you will become one so severely that you will lose all sense of toes wearing top hats. Well, that was funny the first time, but not so much that time. I think I'll just walk my head out of here in absolute shame over making that pun and nothing else. Oh my god. 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 Secrets, 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 secrets and lies. Okay, well I've got a crypt key, so... I guess I'll go down to the crypt now. Loser. Oh, are you? No, you're not Benny. Yeah, the 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 Benny getting drunk thing just kind of existed. There's not really any stuff going on with it. It's just kind of there. Anyway, say at the bottom, right? Well, here's the bottom. <laughs> Let's sit upon it. Oh yeah, and I like how these things are sort of half buried in the snow. It's a simple but effective gesture. Here is the crypt. Yeah, like what a beautiful inner courtyard. Wait. Oh, <laughs> it's an old key. It doesn't specifically say crypt. However, looks like there's been digging going on here with really no explanation. Oh. There was a switch on there. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby's plus a switch. That was an annoying thing you can say. And if you want a ghost, you can go like this. Maybe you can chop it too. I don't know. I'm not going to try because I'm the most serious ghoster ever. Clatrimus, move the heck aside because I'm the biggest liar in town. Oh. That's what <laughs> you see. They were in the crypt even. Haha. <laughs> and I knew I'd come across them eventually. Boy howdy, I was wondering for a minute there. Alrighty. Can't even close them up, so Yeah, I actually uh, yeah, you can ghost if you can't close a thing. It's just if you can but don't, I guess. So, it's kind of neat, then, how you can get a preview of this through the little venti vent. 
and the grande event. That was a Starbucks joke, Dorothy Highwater. Henry. And Lady Diana. Highwater. But now we get to go back and around. To the excessively slow moving gates. And for some reason I can stuff this no back model right into my bag. It's pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> and here we come to the real name place, but it is okay because Lord Albert is here to elongate your head. <laughs> it's yeah. So there's the sword. Still need the dirty laundry, but... Well, that shouldn't take too long. Say at the top, um... Okay, so here's the heavy stool. So we take this back to the library. Say in the middle, um... Right. Here we go. In fact... I discovered this by myself the first time I played. I was just putting the stool down because I thought maybe you had to... What did I think? I thought... I knew they were suspicious. I thought maybe I had to stack them and climb somewhere. Maybe I... I don't, I don't remember. But I eventually put it down there and I was like, Whoa, what? And then I couldn't find the third stool and then I read the note and blah, blah, blah. It's just fantastic, horrific tale to be told. This painting, mighty suspicious. And there's an evil diary, which really is scaled down, and it doesn't even look like Lorem Ipsum, but we'll never know. Ever. Nene dirty laundry, kick him when it down. Alright. Another month, and another thousand sent to her. I don't know how much more I can handle it. Not the financial drain, but the emotional toll. Every month when I discreetly give the money to the courier, it just serves to remind me of my mistake. I have had enough of the blackmail. I still regret that I was unfaithful to my wife, but it was nearly a decade ago, and I'm no longer afraid if Catherine chooses to come out with it. Now that she's married herself, and then the assistant curator at the museum, she has almost as much to lose as I do by making the truth of our affair known. I'm going to include a note with a January payment telling her that it will be the last. It is done. The message has been sent. I guess I'll see how and if she responds to it in the coming days. Unfortunately, if so- wait, there is a switch in some- No, it's the light- oh. <laughs> Fortunately, if somebody else reveals it, they'll both go down the tubes. Oh! Oh, oh, well, I suppose that now, the thing about this mansion is you've got to remember which gate is which, or you'll be stuck at the wrong one and have to walk a few steps. Ho, 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 you don't yes. want Anyone? that bucko. You have the young lady's voice when you're an old lady. Such a crime. Right, well, here's the exit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here's the exit. Ah. Five out of five secrets. That's good enough for me. And, uh... I'm really gonna succeed this time. <laughs>